Hello everyone, it's Maya here today and I thought I would kick off my next video by talking about the things that I wish I had known before transitioning. And what made me kind of think of this topic is 2020 is just literally around the corner and I feel like I've gone through so much in the past few years. A lot of it you guys have seen because I've shared on social media since 2014, which oh my god is six years ago so i thought i would dive right in and share with you guys some of the stuff that i've learned over the years and what i wish i had known beforehand but of course you can't learn unless you make mistakes and you grow so i don't regret not knowing any of these things but in hindsight i do kind of wish i had known them before i transitioned and if you guys are wondering why I'm wearing this like fancy top, it's because I was picking out outfits for New Year's Eve today. And yeah, I think I'm gonna settle on this one. It's really cute, what do you guys think? <laughs> You'll definitely probably see me in some posts on Instagram wearing it. So if you're interested, follow me at Maya V. Henry. And yeah, let's get started. So one of the first things that I wish I had known is all of the effects of HRT. You know, I feel like you hear so much about always the positives for trans people so you hear about the fat redistribution you hear about the thinning of hair you hear about the loss of muscle tone in a positive light and I feel like all of those things are great and obviously I'm glad that I'm on HRT and I'm very lucky but there are a lot of things that I didn't know would happen going on to it obviously hormones change your mental state and that's not something that a lot of people talk about I feel like when I miss my pills for a little bit and then take them again I can feel a difference and I know a lot of healthcare professionals will tell you that it's not gonna make a difference if you miss a few days I'm talking like maybe missing four days or something like that and like maybe I didn't refill my prescription on time or maybe I forgot them and went on a trip or something and when I take them again I can kind of feel like a zombie a little bit and I feel like in general on occasion I can feel a little bit like a zombie I feel like that is maybe the depression side effect it's not super severe with me but I do have my days where I just feel like I can't do anything and I feel like that could also just be other factors but in those moments I feel like why am I feeling this way why do I have no energy so it happens like in small instances it's just something like I think about and also just my thought process and stuff has changed a little bit hard to describe really because your brain is your brain so once it changes you don't always realize it because it's just how you're thinking right so super strange that way and then also the HRT really did affect my libido I know that it was expected because you are completely suppressing your testosterone which for men that's what creates the sex drive and stuff and yeah I wouldn't say my sex drive is completely gone um, but it is nothing like what it used to be and I guess I was a teenage boy before I transitioned so that's probably why it was so high before and then completely dipped off but I will say I feel like there's a lot to learn from this experience with regard to libido um, it's just accessed in a different way it's more emotional but it is definitely decreased a lot I don't know how that will change after SRS or GRS whatever you want to call it I'm not sure how that will change once you get castrated <laughs> um, I can only assume it would be similar to now because your body won't be producing testosterone in your sex organ so I feel like I don't know I feel like though once I'm off the blockers I feel like I'll be more leveled out I feel like the blockers aren't super healthy to be on for a super long amount of time because they can also cause side effects like damaging your kidneys and stuff depending which ones you're taking and your liver and stuff like that so I feel like when I get SRS things will hopefully get better and then there is also the physical side effects of HRT. I do feel like I've obviously lost muscle tone, but kind of to the extent where like I kind of miss a little bit of muscle tone, you know? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just my fault for not working out enough and, um, well, I eat pretty healthy, so I'm not going to say I don't. And, uh, I also just feel like it's like harder to get muscle. And then on top of that, I do notice more vascular things like spider veins around my knees and stuff, like on my thighs. They're pretty small and I don't really care about them, but it's just something I noticed that I had never had before. Could be just from standing, but I think it has to do with the estrogen and the blockers and my hormones and my circulation and stuff like that. Another thing that I wish I knew about before transitioning is the importance of mental transition. 
person. Obviously the news and the media and even YouTube glamorizes the physical transition. Like look what I looked like before and now look what I look like. And it doesn't really encapsulate the whole mental process that one goes through when transitioning. I think one of the most important things that are overlooked a lot of the time, and this might be controversial, is acceptance of yourself as trans. I feel like a lot of people, and myself included at some points, um, early, early on, like before I transitioned, feel like you can go through a series of steps and then achieve happiness and be the woman comparable to a cis woman that you've always wanted to be. And it's just really not like that. There is such a journey you have to go through. And I feel like the most important thing you have to learn is to accept your transness because living completely stealth and denying and deluding yourself that you are XY is a little bit toxic, I want to say. And I know people say, oh, chromosomes are chromosomes, who cares? It's true, like, honestly, no one's looking at your chromosomes. That's why I've always argued, like, why do people care when dating about chromosomes? It's so stupid. But at the same time, like, you have to be aware that there are always going to be differences between you and cis women and not try to achieve perfection, you know? I feel like true happiness comes from accepting the things that you cannot change. We can change our hormones, we can change our body with surgery and greater achieve um, the look that we want and alleviate our dysphoria, but we can never change the fact that we are trans. It's part of who we are and I feel like loving and accepting that and our differences is very important in learning to love yourself and to successfully transition. Why is it so negative to be seen as different from cis women, you know? Like, we should be celebrating it. Another thing that I wish I knew before transitioning is that surgeries are a lifestyle. So getting a breast augmentation, as I have, and I've documented it for you guys, it was uh, obviously not going to be something that was just a write-off, like, oh, I'm gonna get boobs and then I'll be done for the rest of my life. I went into it knowing that it was going to be a lifestyle. So what I mean by that is that eventually you will need to replace your implants. They do get old after around 10 years, I believe. They could rupture. There's so many complications you can get. And so you might need surgery for capsular contracture or other things. And so that is really important to note. And it's the same with SRS or GRS. You might need a revision surgery and you have to be dilating for the rest of your life or if you have a partner, you just have to always make sure that you are dilating in some way. Otherwise, you will lose depth and capacity and whatever. So just knowing that transitioning is a lifestyle is something that's very important. It's not just going to be like a, I'm trans, and then you do a few things and then you're done. Like, your life is going to be different from it was before. It's not just like a click of a button and you're brand new, you know? So, I mean, some people won't get those surgeries and it won't feel as much like that, but just from my perspective and what I wanted to achieve, it's a lifestyle. Another thing that I want to touch on, which I wish I had known about pre-transition, is dating. So I had never dated anyone or even thought of dating prior to transitioning, and I transitioned when I was 19, or started transitioning, I should say. And I had no concept of dating, and I kind of set the bar low for myself. I said to myself, you know what, I don't know who is ever going to want to date a trans person. It wasn't super mainstream back then, and I just had no concept or expectation of dating. I thought, you know what, I'm choosing this path and this is the path that I feel like is necessary for me to survive and it might mean being lonely for the rest of my life. So I set the bar very low and I kind of knew the expectations that it may not work out for me. I was going into this blindly, you know, like there was not a lot of spelunkers in this cave of mystery, but going into it, I wish I had known just how interesting, scary, and toxic dating can be, you know? Like it's such a, a difference when you go from being completely unavailable and off the market and then transitioning and guys start finding you attractive and pretty and approaching you and I, I don't know, I kind of described it in a weird way back then and it was kind of like being a kid in a candy shop. Like all of a sudden you have access to this whole new life that you never could before, dressing, dating, everything. And it kind of overwhelms you at once. And especially with dating, I feel like 
especially trans women will lower their standards myself included and this was more so before um, you lower your standards because you are constantly questioning like this person likes me and maybe I'll never find someone else like that again because it gets so difficult right and I would say that dating apps like tinder and whatever they're more for heterosexual people who are cisgender um or even gay people um but for trans people it's very very toxic at least in my experience you get constant rejection and it's like cancer for your self-esteem it's like honestly the worst so i wish i had known before transitioning like not to <laughs> put as much value in those apps, not to go on those apps, and not to allow people who don't even know me to judge me and to make negative assumptions about me, if that makes sense. So I feel like I just, it's pretty general, honestly. Like, I feel like most people feel this way. They wish that they had gotten out of a toxic relationship or learned all these lessons without having to go through it, but I feel like we all have to go through it in order to learn, so. It's just, it is what it is. And I just think the lessons learned that I wish I had learned back then is that you should never compromise who you are or what you want in life for someone else because ultimately being true to yourself and being with yourself is more important than finding a partner and depending on them for happiness. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that I wish I had known before I transitioned is not to compare myself to others. It's something that's kind of human nature, so it's obviously impossible not to do on some level, but I just wanted to reiterate that trans people are all coming from different advantages and disadvantages, um, financially, genetically, uh, family-wise, relationships, and so we cannot compare ourselves in our passing as success because each person has their own successes and their own happinesses and what might be an achievement for one person might not be for another and so it's all different levels right and then even taking that a step further I specifically have I've fallen into the trap of often comparing myself to cis women because in my life I don't have a lot of LGBT friends or a lot of trans friends specifically unfortunately and I end up comparing myself to my friends who are cis and like it's just not a healthy way for anyone to be because obviously everyone's different even within cis women they're going to be comparing themselves but specifically for trans women it's like you have the odds against you like I went through seven years of I would say at least seven years of male puberty I had testosterone running through my veins and then on top of that I had to try to reverse and transition and go through my second puberty and so you have all of those factors working against you and so you really can't compare yourself to cis women because your journey was so so different so i might be taller i might have bigger feet i might have bigger hands i might have a longer jaw or whatever you want to say might have an adam's apple but all of that is stuff that shows what i went through and what i overcame in order to be who i am today so i hope that's inspirational for you guys in 2020 um recently like someone commented on one of my videos and i shared it on instagram it was like a little moment of weakness of mine but they had an itemized list essentially of all these things that i need to improve in my transition and that i should stop being so confident about passing because i am only in the middle range of people who are attractive in passing and it basically tried to knock me down a peg and they basically listed all the things that i already have micro or major insecurities about and just threw them in my face that i need to change these in order to be more accepted by society more beautiful and more passing and some of those things were like my chin my adam's apple my voice um, just stuff like that like picking me apart and it was a really really negative experience reading that but then I remembered wait a minute this bitch ain't gonna compare herself to cis women or to other people and that's not about looking the most passable or the most beautiful it's about feeling the most complete in yourself and embracing the things that you cannot change all of this stuff that they're listing costs so much money to change and obviously like someone might not be in the place to afford that like for me for instance i just can't justify getting my chin done and my adam's apple done and whatever else done when i have bill payments rent student 
student loan, you name it. So it's just not realistic and you can't compare and contrast yourself to all these people who might have had more advantage than you in life. It's all about comparing yourself to past versions of yourself and always trying to better yourself. And that is my goal for 2020. I hope you guys found this video at least a little bit interesting. Um, it was kind of very introspective and reflective for me to think back on all the things that I've learned. I feel like I've come so far as a person and sometimes I forget to stop and celebrate all that I've done. I'm always thinking about what could I do more of and I think in this moment, at least today, I'm just thinking and being grateful for all that I have been through and all that I have persevered through and that goes for the same for all of you guys. I know there are so many of you that are going through tough situations right now, but just know that you are strong and beautiful for per persevering through it. And I believe in you and I love you guys. And I will see you in 2020.